we are back today we have another narco video my name is JC I am Ron Strong spent 17 years of my life in and out of prison from state to federal to Mexican prison I've been all over the US in a plane with chains and handcuffs shackles the black box you name it it's not a good thing when you're up in the air flying and you eat that bologna sandwich with the milk and then you have to poop. You can't, it's very hard to poop with one hand. Trust me. But today, I am Ron Strong. I motivate people to see the best in themselves from the gym that I have here in Phoenix to the Lewis prison where I work at. It's what I do. I help inmates see the old me and the new me so that way they could see that your past did not define you. That was pretty deep, huh? <laughs> we have a narco story today. He was arrested by chance and was, was released by the U.S. for good behavior. Yeah, you see? People could change. He was considered one of the most violent drug traffickers in Mexico in the 80s and 90s. He was known for his unmistakable Colt Super 83 pistol. Let's get into this. What's up, Nessa? If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. Hit that like button, leave a comment, tell me what you think. If you're part of my Wrong and Strong family, welcome back. We're doing this today. JC, yeah, I'm back. <sighs> I have to catch my breath sometimes because I get too excited when I do these videos. He was arrested when a small plane was moving him from Sonora to Guadalajara and it crashed. The military discovered him and thanks to his unmistakable pistol that's how he got arrested and this was in june of 1995 he was sentenced to seven years in the max prison in mexico it's called puente grande and they been telling stories about this prison since like when i was in prison in mexico it's it's a pretty it's a pretty big uh big dog place i call it it's where they send the big dogs his close friend was also there, Chapo. Chapo was hanging out there. He was there, you know what I mean? They started taking over the prison, um, and, and they did their thing. And, and Mexico is very, very different compared to the U.S. Um, prison life is very, very different compared to the U.S. So, you know, um, I've told people in the past, if you have not watched my, my uh, Mexican prison video, watch it. You'll be surprised. He was also accused of helping El Chapo uh, being one of his accomplices to escape. In 2007, he was extradited to Phoenix, Arizona and was sentenced to 16 years in prison at the Colorado ADX. This is where El Chapo is now. This is where they send, if you're a big dog, you're going to end up in ADX. Uh, and if you have not watched my video about this prison in Colorado, I'm going to leave it on the cards and watch it. You'll be surprised how, you know, a lot of human right places believe that this is not a good place because of the lockdowns and all that stuff. But, I mean, prison is prison. And whether you are in a 23-hour hold or, you know, half a day hole or whatever the only way prison changes is if you go down in security that's like if you're at a and the big the bigger ones are lows and camps those are the big different ones and i'll make a video and explain the difference on those but palma served nine years out of the 16 and was released for good behavior on june 15 2016 Eduardo palma left prison at age 56 his health his health was in poor condition he was uh you know starting to go blind he had missing teeth he had a hernia um that's one of the big things that i talk about here 
in the US, uh, the prison, when you're in prison, uh, you're really not getting no dental help. You're not getting, it's, it's, it's hard to see the doctor. There's really not a healthcare provider in there. Like <laughs> there's like you, you wait years to get like a hernia fix and stuff like that. And, and that's what happens when you spend a long time in prison. You actually, if you don't self take, like if you don't take care of yourself, like eating better than normal people in there and, and exercising regularly and, and doing all the things that you have to do, you actually come out in worse condition that you went in in. It, it's, I've seen it in and out. Like I've seen so many guys in there, you know, turn diabetic, get sick, lose all their teeth. Um, I mean, I went in there and I had some, some stuff that I needed done with my teeth that I was getting done on the outside. And in there, they don't provide that. So the best thing they do is pull out your teeth. And yeah, they pulled most of my teeth out. But there's only been two cartel members released from the U.S. federal prison. And he was one of them. He was deported to Mexico where he was picked up by uh, Mexican authorities on a murder charge and he's now awaiting trial on, uh, you know, he's in another maximum security prison over there. His family was murdered, his wife and kids. I don't want to get into that out of respect for him. Um, this is, I, I hate to say it, but this, this guy was one of my like top favorite narcos uh, as growing up as a kid hearing Corridos about him, stories about him, and stuff like this. And just out of respect, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about what happened to his kids and his wife. If you guys care to know about it, uh, they have it on that uh, narco series and by Netflix. Watch it, and if not, look it up. But I'm not going to talk about it. Just out of respect, people. People don't realize that events like that change you forever, and sometimes. I mean, just think about it, which, what he had to deal with all those years incarcerated, thinking about the things that he did and the things that were done to him. Um, they change you. They change you for life. Uh, this is why I, I share, you know, my stories and I share these kinds of stories to, so people can see the other side of the coin because, you know, they show all these movies and they glamorize all this you know, narco life and Scarface, Goodfellas and all this stuff, but they don't show the other side. And the other side is the stuff that you do to survive and the things that you have to do and the things that you see. And this creates demons in your head for the rest of your life that you have to live with. And that's the thing is that it's not what it's cut out to be. The money, the fast cars, the, the, the life, it's not what it's cut out to be. It's actually a very hard job. Uh, call it what it is. It's not a normal nine to five job. Like it comes with a lot of, lot of stuff behind it. And that's, that's the thing is this is why I always tell people I don't glamorize what I did or who I know and how my life was. I share my story so people could see this and actually not want to go that route. Because if you look at every story that I've had about every narco, they either end up in prison or dead, and that's the end of the story. There is no happy ending to the story. He got out, yes, from the US prison, but he was then picked up by Mexican prison, by the Mexican authorities, and taken into Mexican prison. So, who knows if he's going to make it out? Probably not. Will he live better years in the Mexican prison? Probably, because Mexican system prison is very, very different compared to America. In Mexico, you get conjugal visits. You get food sent from outside. You, it, it's very, very different. But the thing is, it's still prison. Whether the cage is made out of gold, it's still a cage. It doesn't matter. And this is, this is the big picture behind all these stories about all these narcos and everything because if, if you guys uh, don't know uh narcos is actually one of the top top uh rated like series watched on netflix also um queen of the south uh, i'll be doing a video on her uh later this week and all these people were you know the mafia had its time where it was all glamorized 
the money, the casinos, the, the you know, all, all this stuff. And now it's the narco culture because now that's the, the one that's making the billions and the millions and all that stuff. But people don't realize that it's not, it's not good. It's really, really bad. And it leaves you with very bad stuff. It's taken me years to actually get better to the point where I'm actually functioning normal. This is why I was in and out of prison my whole life because I had so many demons that I did not know how to actually be normal. So it is what it is. Eduardo Palma, share the story today. If you guys have not subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe. Don't miss none of the videos. We got some stuff coming on. My channel is about my story. I talk about the gangsters, I talk about the cartel, I talk about everything that has something to do with my story. If you guys have not picked up your Wrong Strong gear, make sure you pick it up. It's live now on Teespring. Everything's on there from hoodies to shirts to everything. My book's on Amazon. If you guys want to get to know me a little bit more, my second book will be dropped in a couple of months. I want to say six months and it'll be ready to go. The complete story of JC Wrong Strong growing up in Chicago, doing time in Mexican prison, and working for the cartel in Michoacan. So all that's about to be released. Like I said, don't judge nobody. Give somebody a hug. Stay in your lane. And always, always stay savage. My name's JC, and I am Wrong the Strong. And I'll check you guys out next time. All right?